The Jet Set Radio franchise has a special aesthetic ahead of its time. The music composer Hideki Naganuma was able to capture that amazing world, and he did it all with one simple drum groove. Just to have a small recap on what Jet Set Radio is, Jet Set Radio is a video game centered around being part of a skater gang and participating in the graffiti missions running from the police. This game was definitely ahead of its time with the gameplay and the use of aesthetics to pull you deeper into the story and the characters. When we look at the aesthetics of Jet Set Radio, it's heavily influenced by Y2K culture and a bit of Harajuku culture. To create a world setting with such an attractive pool for the younger demographics, it's hard for me to explain Y2K culture because, you know, I was born at the tail end of the culture and I didn't really live through it. But, you know, a lot of what can, I can explain is that it's an aesthetic that has a lot of elements of futuristic pop and like punk and other like alt elements, whatever that's in it. And I think it's easier for me to list a bunch of things that are related to it so you can understand better. We can even see this, you know, early 2000s, late 90s culture returning now in 2023, mostly within like the Generation Z and the recent popularity of like the fashion style. The composer for the game, Hideki Naganuma, decided to capitalize on using genres that captured that aesthetic and to help bring alive that world. He based a lot of the songs around hip hop, D&B, techno, and a lot of electro music that, you know, started to gain popularity a bit before this aesthetic popped up. And these genres tended to have crossover between like the Y2K and aesthetic and everything. So, you know, they tended to kind of go hand in hand with each other. But there is a specific groove that ties all of these genres together. And what is that groove exactly? To be blunt, the groove that carried through in the Jet Set Radio franchise is the groove of James Brown, or more specifically, his drummer, Clyde Stubblefield. Before I talk about, you know, the specific el musical elements that make this groove, I want to give a little insight on who Clyde Stubblefield is. Clyde Stubblefield was born in 1949 in Chattanooga, Tennessee. As a young kid, he was inspired by the drumming of those from parades and ended up becoming a self-taught drummer. Being born right before the third industrial revolution, a lot of his drumming was influenced by the rhythms he heard from like factories and tractories, uh, tractories and from trains around him. And after playing in bands for Eddie Kirkland and Otis Redding, um, he auditioned for James Brown and became one of his main drummers. James Brown is known for being really stubborn about, you know, groove to the point where he abandoned most of the regular approaches to music like melody and harmony and almost solely focused on groove. But Mr. Brown, Clyde will be in a different time than the rest of the band. It doesn't work musically. How many hit records you got, sir? Huh? Fellas, does it sound good? Yeah, Does it feel good? Yeah, God made your ears. You didn't make them. You gonna argue what God's is? If it sound good and it feel good, then it's musical. So play it like I say play it. And he said every instrument was essentially a drum and has simply a part to play in the groove. Knowing this, you can only imagine how special of a drummer you have to be to be chosen to get to play in this band. But before I reveal the succulent secrets of Clyde Stubblefield's groove, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button for me. Thank you. Which leads to us in the next question. How is Clyde's groove important and how does it relate to Jet Set Radio? These older genres like old school hip hop EDM and drums and bass all tend to be very sample heavy, which means these all kind of are within that category of break beats. A sample in this context means using an already existing song and then making it into a new song. Jet Set Radio uses a ton of these samples within its music. The fun. Would you stop playing with that radio of yours? I'm yes. Would you stop playing with that radio of yours? I'm trying to... Clyde Stubblefield comes in the mix because his drum groove ended up being one of the most sampled drum grooves and was literally on, like, about everything. On a lot of different songs. And to the point where, like... Even other songs that sample other drummers, those drummers used a lot of his groove, so they kind of still sound like Clyde Stubblefield drum groove samples, you know. So he really influenced the game. Let's listen really quick to maybe the most recognized Clyde Stubblefield drum pattern, the funky drummer. Like a, 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 like a,
after listening to the groove, you might say it sounds, you know, kind of normal, but that's because you're thinking in context of this time period. What he was doing then wasn't nearly as popular as it is now today. With him being the reason for why this groove is so normalized today, what mainly gives this groove is his flavor and Clyde's use of the black beat. The back beat is just a way of referring to accents on weak beats of the bar, right? So you have normally... And a lot of Western music, you have four beats in one bar. So one, two, three, four, right? The weak beats being two and four and the strong beats being one and three. So the back beat is created from people thinking, hmm, what happens if I accent the beats that are weak instead of the ones that are strong? Like maybe that gives a different feeling and it does. And a lot of popular music today kind of has that feeling. Then he will put ghost notes in between. Listen to the difference between having ghost notes and not having ghost notes. This one groove literally defined the foundation for so many of the popular forms of music that we hear today. And also helped to push the groove of the genres that were being played during that time period. Because of that, even when... In the way that you would hear producers who would hear the funky drummer groove and want to get a drum groove that sounded like that, but they didn't want to use the same one that everyone else used. So they found a record from a drummer who wanted to sound like Clyde Stubblefield from the funky drummer record. So... <laughs> You know, it kind of ties back together that even when it wasn't directly Clyde who played on the record, he still kind of had a bit of, you know, seasoning on the song itself. And you can just find it all throughout the soundtrack. It's interesting how growing with these different games and like shows, if you dig a bit, you can find things of like the past weaves in between them.